Hey everybody, this is George the Tech with a one take review. What's one take review? That means I'm just gonna talk, no edits, flubs and all, here you go. This seems to be the only way I can get myself motivated to do reviews and things like lately. I've just been, uh, well, pretty darn busy here at George the Tech. Blessed, but busy. And when I'm given something to review, I need to do it in a timely fashion. So I got a little kick in the pants this morning by an email from Jack <laughs> Jack Daniel, who loaned me this microphone. And he said, hey, would you bring that back today when you, we, when you come into the studio? Because he, uh, he helps us over at the VOBS.TV studio. And I was like, you got it, man. So <laughs> time to get this review in real quick. So this is, uh, this is the case it comes in. This is the beautiful... MXL, uh, this is the road case the MXL uh, CR89 comes in. If you're familiar with MXL mics, this is pretty typical. I'd say it's a little bit nicer than what's typically seen in their product line in terms of cases, but it seems to be really nicely made. Kind of like a little mini Halliburton case or something. Let's take a look inside and see what's doing in here. All right, there is the inside of the CR89 case. There's our microphone, which this is probably one of the heaviest microphones I think I've ever held in my hand. It is very heavy. I don't know why. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you a little bit of information about it on their website here while I talk. But I believe it's probably because of the, the, the chassis or the, or the case or the, the tube that holds the electronics is probably made out of a very heavy brass or some kind of very high quality material. And that's a material of choice for making quality microphones because it doesn't resonate. And so you don't want to color the sound of the mic. So here you are. Look how beautiful that is. It's sort of like a dark chrome color. Chromed, but blacked out chrome. Kind of kind of dark and evil looking a little bit, isn't it? Totally devoid of any switches. There's no high pass, no pad, nothing. This is a pretty pure microphone. And then a nice beefy, heavy duty looking shock mount that they include with it. A step above the average that I've seen. It seems very well made on par with what you'd see with some of the much more expensive microphones from Germany. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's the shock mount, very nicely made. And they give you a few extra, a few extra bits, a few extra nylon uh, um, uh, elastics, because these things do wear out after a few years, depending on your climate and a couple keys to lock the mic case. All right, so let's put that aside. And let's get into it. Just looking at the webpage here, you can see that they've obviously enjoyed a quote from a Pro Audio Review magazine for this microphone where it was favored over the Sony 800 or C800G, which is a very well-known, extremely expensive microphone. And the thing is, it's like microphone cost has nothing to do with how appropriate it is for someone's voice or how good it sounds. And I've learned that to be true, for sure. Um, you know, this microphone was obviously designed to, to aim at really high-end mics. In the MXL line, it's not nearly the cheapest. It's not the most expensive either. It's in the, probably the top third of their price range, but still only comes in around 250 US dollars, somewhere around there. So it's, uh, it's really quite impressive. Um, some of the spe specs that people like to see, um, gold sputtered eight, six, my, uh, gold sputtered six micron diaphragm. It's a cardioid mic, of course, condenser. Um, what else is useful here? Can handle 138 dB. So you can yell into this thing. Signal to noise ratio is 80 dB. That's not bad. The equivalent noise level, which is what a lot of people look at 14 dB, sometimes also known as self noise. If you compare that to like a Neumann TLM 103, that one's more like, I think, a six. Don't quote me on that, but you can Google it. So this is obviously not as quiet as a TLM 103, but it's also a quarter of the price. Um, so a dynamic range of 124 dB is what you get. And I think that is more than enough and plenty quiet enough for recording voiceover work. So as you can see, 1.85 pounds, quite a heavy microphone. But uh, it feels it and I'd say it sounds it. I think I lied about that editing part. I had to edit that in. I'm gonna put the mic up here on a tripod stand. And let's take a listen to see how it sounds because that's at the end of the day really all that matters. You guys can look at specs all day long on the internet, but we wanna know how it sounds. And as you can hear, I'm, I'm also, I'm using another MXL microphone I have. This is the one I've been using just for doing my webcasts for years now. It's an MXL 1006. 
way out of production. A um, little bit of processing on it. I won't be, you know, there's some expander and things like that on this microphone. So it's going to sound a little artificially clean and bright than it normally would. Um, so actually, if I bypass all that, that's what this microphone sounds like. So this is just totally flat compression expander off. And guess what? Yes, you can hear my computer fan. And I know what you're thinking. Really? George the Tech can hear your computer fan in the recordings? Seriously, dude? I know. Give me a break. It's, an, it's a seven-year-old Mac Mini. It's, this is not what I normally do in here. So we're, we're going to have to make that work today. But anyway, here's my MXL 1006. No compression, nothing. And we'll go ahead and put the CR89 up in its place. Well, actually on this mic. Notice how I put the pop stand on. I'm putting my processing back on. There we go. I like that. A little more gain, a little hotter. Um, notice I put the, the shock mount on the arm first. Always have the shock mount on before you put the mic in the shock mount, right? Pro tip. If you, I don't know if you noticed how quickly I did it because I've done it a thousand times. I held the shock mount one hand while I tightened the thread. I literally loosened the arm itself and tightened it into the shock mount instead of spinning it around. Okay, it makes it a lot easier. Then, microphone. Up and in. I'm gonna drop it down, make sure it's in frame so you can see. And now I'm gonna hold the microphone firmly so it does not fall. And painstakingly twist the little knurled nut on the top. Which, frankly, could stand to have a little bit of uh, lubrication added to it, make it turn easier. But anyway, holding the mic firmly, twisting the knurled nut, but not making it really tight. It doesn't need to be tight. You want to be able to turn the mic around to make adjustments to the mic placement. Okay. So there it is. Let me plug it in. Let's take a listen to it. All right. Obviously, I'm a little closer to this one. I'm a lot closer. I'm about put my uh, the pinky to thumb distance away from the mic. No processing. Totally flat, as you hear it in my room. Um, this is a very che cheaply or simply <laughs> quickly treated room. It's got a moving blanket on the floor. I have a terry cloth towel packed, tacked to the ceiling above my head, directly above my head, to get rid of some of those early reflections. But it's got a little bit of liveliness to it. It's not too bad. But this is just give you an idea what this mic sounds like. This is um, just making sure it's totally flat. Yes, it's going um, into my Roland. What's this thing called? This old Roland MMP2 mic preamp, which has a, a lot of processing on board I can use. But right now it's totally flat. Uh, then it's going into my Mackie uh, Onyx 820i into a line input. EQ is totally flat. And then that's passing into the computer via Firewire. So you're hearing it captured right off Firewire right now, theoretically. Actually, I take that back. You're actually hearing me through um, an Avid Mbox. That's the device that's here hearing me right now. If we want to just be thorough, we can record another track in Twisted Wave and record this microphone. Let's do that. Let's record this microphone simultaneously through another signal record, another recording chain. And we'll record through channel two of the Mackie. Check, check, check. So now this is a uh, channel two of the, this is the Firewire port of the Mackie. Channel two being recorded simultaneously as the Avid, which is being recorded in my screen recording and video capturing software called ScreenFlow. So all those things are running together here simultaneously, and we're getting a nice capture of what that will sound like. Um, modulation, getting about minus 12, minus to minus 6. I, I firmly believe that you can record it at, if you record at 24-bit, you do not have to be peaking up to minus 6 at all. You can be peaking below minus 6, below minus 12 even, and still get fantastic quality. But anyway, this is what the CR89 on my voice, which is a little bit, a little, my voice is a little deeper sounding right now than normal. It's not super warmed up yet, but there you have it. I think um, for its price, I think it competes very uh, favorably with some of the other mics that are designed this way. This minimalistic, um, no bells and whistles design approach, no switches or anything. Um, 
it seems pretty, I don't know. I don't have any other mics that are of a much higher end price range to compare it with some of the usual suspects. But um, I got to say, I'm pretty impressed. I, I saw this sh uh, microphone at NAMM a couple of years ago, and it just randomly saw a picture of it up in Jack's studio. And I thought, Jack, I've always wanted to try that mic. And he said, no problem. I'll bring it in. Thanks to you, Jack. I really appreciate you letting me borrow the CR89, getting you know, letting me use it for a while. And I have to say, I do like it. I think it has a little, a little more upper mid-range presence than maybe I'd like for everything. Um, but that can be smoothed out with a little bit of EQ. I checked the, the, the frequency curve. In fact, if I go back and look at the web page, the frequency curve shows that the microphone is not ultra flat. It's got a little bit of a rise slightly in the low, low mid range, which is not too bad. And then it's got a little bit of a dip around 1K, which is actually generally a good thing. And then a little bit of a rise at the upper mid, you know, the upper frequencies around 8K and then rolls off. It's not a flat mic, but it's also not an overly bumpy mic with like big presence peaks with tons of sibilance and treble and... I, I think this mic could sound really good on, on, on women's voices, you know, which is what my original thought was, was that this could be a nice, good on many voices, but maybe even for women, because it does not artificially bump the treble up, which most women do not need. This mic will not overly emphasize um, sibilance. So anyway, that's the end of my rambling, quick mini one-take review of the CR89 microphone. Um, and if you want to see more stuff like this, comment below. Tell me what you want me to talk about. Tell me what you want to see on this channel. This channel is very young. It's not got much going on on here yet. I have a lot of work to do. So if you're interested in seeing more content, subscribe, click the bell so you know when I release more videos. And I'll try to keep uh, more of a flow going now that I have this little quote-unquote studio set up for doing this. So anyway, thanks again. My name's George Whittem from georgethetech.com, and I uh, appreciate it so much. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys around the YouTubes. Bye.